So, got the mold already, about ready to begin layup. Uh, the mold is prepped with one coat of wax. So I think one coat may be sufficient because this is part is very glossy. I also put over the edge um, some of this PVA release film, which is water soluble plastic. So. I don't like to do it on glossy surfaces because it doesn't dry with a gloss. It's, it can mess up the surface texture just a little bit. But on the matte edges here, I decided to do it just to make the act of releasing the, the part from the mold a little bit easier. This mold also has packing tape on the outside and even on the back side. <clears throat> It's got packing tape and the whole thing is waxed so that if any fabric with epoxy roughs around and dries there, it'll be easier to separate. Now, around the perimeter, I'm going to be doing a mixture. It's going to be epoxy with additives of graphite and fumed silica. So rather than kind of trying to guess with after mi mixing it into the epoxy and possibly getting streaks because this is white and this is black I kind of put it into a bag here and I'm just going to kind of mix it in and I may add some more graphite if it's not dark enough but this is really a, kind of a strange powder because it, it kind of flows it's, the chemical is so light and uh, you really don't want to be doing a lot with it outside of a closed container. So I've mix, mixed up this cabosil and graphite powder in the bag. And as you can kind of perhaps see, there are little white kind of clumps of cabosil that I don't like to mix in. But when it's mixed in with epoxy, it, it should, this should go away. Again, the pre-mixing is just to kind of um, prevent any kind of streaks so that basically we're starting with a consistent color. Um, I don't know exactly how much epoxy it's going to make uh, it's required to do this edge, but I'm thinking somewhere between four and six ounces. So I've got this on the back of the can, it has a weight ratio. It says 3.7 parts resin to one part hardener. So I kind of pre-calculated some weights here in the front of the can. So I can easily create, like this is about four or five ounces. If I wanted to use 100 grams and 27 grams of hardener. So I've determined that 137 grams of Resin to 37 grams of hardener is about 6.2 ounces, so that's about what I want. So I've teared out my cup. I'm just going to pump some resin. So 137. This can got damaged in the shipping a little bit, but at least it doesn't leak. Doesn't have to be precise, like to the gram, yes, but as long as it's within an acceptable range. So I said 137 and 37. Right. So I tear it out and add 37. Great. So now it's time to stir it. When stirring, you want to kind of mix up from the bottom to the top in addition to scraping the sides. 
I like to use the wooden sticks for this. And you try not to introduce a whole lot of bubbles, although with the, the Capocil um, graphite mix, it's going to be very hard to do that because mixing in that powder requires a lot of folding. It does not like to mix in with the resin. So we mix the resin first and then add the ad additives. And this resin is, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's pretty clear, which is why I got this, this hardener. Now, you wouldn't want to leave this amount of epoxy in a cup for a long time because it is an exothermic reaction and it's generating heat. And I, although I can't feel it right now, I made the mistake of leaving it in the cup one time and it's, it got up to like 350 degrees. It started boiling. It let off lots of toxic fumes. So you definitely don't want to leave it too long. Now I'm going to go outside and mix this powder in. So I'm, I've got this pretty well mixed in. It's not super thick, but it definitely thickened it up, which is the purpose of the capsule. It thickens it and it also kind of makes the resulting epoxy tougher, more resistant to abrasions and things like that. And the, the graphite, so I understand, also makes it tougher, but the additives also make it a little more brittle. So. There is a trade-off. Now, sometimes people put in enough cabasil to make it kind of a peanut butter consistency. That can be used for glues, like gap filling glues. That stuff is really strong. But I didn't put quite that much in. So like I was saying, you don't want to leave it in a large volume for very long. So I'm going to spread it out. It's a little challenging because I don't want it to run down the tape. I don't mind getting it on the tape, but I don't want it to go past the tape. The purpose of this kind of base coat is number one to provide a surface, a good smooth surface without bubbles. And number two, it's to kind of round out some of the rough or sharp edges. So I don't care if the Base coat gets up here on the flange that much, although I prefer it not to, just because it adds a little height, which the fabric will then have to climb a little higher. But I want it to be a little thicker down on the, the middle side of this, so that the fabric doesn't have to bend, bend down before coming up. So it's kind of just smoothing the curves out. By doing that, it'll be less likely to have bubbles when I actually lay the fabric in there. This kind of channel is really nice because it's capturing the epoxy on the sides here. That's kind of what I want it to do too. I'm fill in the channel so again so that the fabric doesn't bend as far. Doesn't have to bend as far. And it's starting to drip. 
the side. So I've got the base coat basically applied. I'm going to have to watch it um, to make sure that it doesn't run across the tape. And I found that uh, plastic squeegee is probably the best way to prevent that from happening. Now, this epoxy still has bubbles in it. And if I don't get those bubbles out, they're going to form craters on the, on the surface. So the way to do that is to use a heat gun, which incre uh, decreases the viscosity, so it's going to make it more runny, but it also causes the bubbles to rise. And I can pop them using the air pressure. So there's the syrup. So I've kind of been just kind of brushing back the uh, epoxy back into its place as it kind of oozes and sags towards the center. Um, during, during layup, this kind of bowl-shaped thing is going to be good because it'll concentrate the epoxy here and that's what you want. You want to work the epoxy from the center, but for this edge, it's kind of working against me. Now I've gone around the perimeter with once with a heat gun, but I'll probably have to do it again. I'll probably want to do it again because the bubbles keep on rising. So, And uh, I'll start using my fingers, I think, to keep the epoxy off of this tape. Because although it works with the, uh, with the squeegee here, it's not optimal. I guess it works pretty well. But with my fingers I could sculpt it a bit more. So the epoxy is constantly thickening. It's, it's almost imperceptibly slow thickening, but it does thicken over time. And it'll gradually start to get less runny. So one thing I want to prevent is from the epoxy getting too thick on the border of the tape because at some point I'm going to pull the tape and I don't want it to get all stringy and I don't want it to have a thick edge there either. So just have to keep on kind of pushing the epoxy back into the corners where I want, want it to be. So I just went over it again with the heat gun. A couple things to note about that. Number one, high temperatures cause the epoxy to cure faster, so you don't want to overdo it. Um, it can actually damage the epoxy. So that's why I kind of went around in a kind of a quick fashion. Um, I'm also a little bit apprehensive about what it might do to the tape adhesive. When I go to pull this off, it's painter's tape, which is usually clean, but I don't know what the heat would do to that. So I've got most of the bubbles out. Um, there are still a few bubbles I can see on the surface, but hopefully the actual underside, which is the part that you'll see uh, in the finished part, is bubble-free. So hopefully those bubbles rose through the, the epoxy. And you can see it's probably been 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and it's still oozing, but it's oozing more slowly now. So I have been using the squeegee to kind of fold back towards the edges, but I think I'm going to start using my finger now because the squeegee introduces bubbles when I grab a, a line of this epoxy and kind of fold it back. It makes a little pocket. So I think I'm just going to start using my finger. That. Hopefully, they'll make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, it shouldn't hurt, but it doesn't seem to be 
doing much better than the doesn't seem to be doing much better than the squeegee. So I might need I might switch back to the squeegee after I get this crap off my finger. So after another probably 10 or 15 minutes, it's probably the consistency of it, it's thicker than honey, but probably not as thick as Too Faced. It's kind of a marmalade kind of a consistency. It's still oozing, but it's easier to control now. Just have to keep nursing it. So another 10 minutes and it's kind of, it's almost like, almost getting closer to toothpaste now. It's still oozing a bit from the edges down, from the vertical edges down to the horizontal, but it's not pooling as much like right here. It's not running down the channels quite as much. So it's kind of like very thick whip, whipped cream or something like that. Maybe a cake frosting that you put on when the cake is too warm so it starts to run a little bit. But hopefully, hopefully in the next 10, 15 minutes it'll become actually like toothpaste where you, it stays where you put it. And eventually, of course, it'll harden up to like taffy and then uh, even, you know, like lollipop, whatever, <laughs> making myself hungry here. But yeah, so when it's, when it gets to be like taffy, which would probably be in like an hour or two, that's when I can start putting on the other stuff. I. I don't want to put on any fabric while it's still wet because the fabric will push through this base coat and become visible on the outside of the outside of the um, finished part. So that's why you need it to be pretty tacky and you don't want to like push down too hard when you when you do put fabric inside. So at this point, I'm not sure how long it's been. It's been probably couple hours to two, two and a half hours or so. At this point, if I tap it, it, will, it, there's no fingerprints, but if I leave my finger on it, it'll make a fingerprint. But it's not moving around. It's uh, So you want it to be kind of this consistency to be able to uh, chemically bond with the layers that come on top of it. If you let it cure too long, it, it won't bond. I don't know exactly when that is, but it seems like I'm about ready to start the real layup. So I've determined that I want like 200 grams of resin and 54 grams of hardener. I'll get about nine ounces of epoxy, which is quite a bit, but um, can be. It's it's okay to have excess, especially in the beginning, because you can work it up through the layers. You can use it for the second, third. It's two hundred grams, and then fifty-four grams. This hardener is much less viscous than the U.S. composites. It just pours rather easily. All right. So, how did the net get in there? Ugh. Gotta love it. Nature. <laughs> so this is uh, it's probably it's probably up to here, so it's quite a quite a lot of epoxy. And as I stir it, I'm trying to scrape the sides in addition to um, kind of making it turn over from top to bottom. So I'm trying to just kind of stir it rather than really whip it up because I don't want to introduce more bubbles than I need to. Let's 
scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. You don't want localized pockets of resin or hardener. Just kind of pour a big leak of it. Just pour it all in here. And it's nice because the mold has a has a shape that just holds it in the middle. squeegee to just draw it over everything. Now this isn't the ultimate. Um, I will be using the squeegee after I put the fabric in, but this is just kind of the base coat. Just to make sure the whole mold is wet. Leakage. Leakage. Not good. Can't waste it. Yeah. This has some bubbles in it, so I'll be using the heat gun on this. getting some of the initial bubbles out. We may be adding more bubbles as we put the fabric in, but I just wanted to get in case any of these bubbles carry over. Okay, so that also should have reduced the viscosity. So it should wet out the fabric a little bit better. So when I'm putting on fabric, I like to pinch it halfway. So that establishes the midpoint, and then I put it halfway. It's a little hard to judge, but I'm sure there's some on each side, about halfway, and hopefully we won't have to move this too much. There we go. So. I usually start out with the squeegee and end up using my hands somewhat too. I always want to work from the middle. And pull from the middle. I can hear some of those bubbles popping and as the uh, epoxy is drawn through the fabric. Really 
need to mix up some more epoxy just to make it a drenching coat. I did forget to put that um, forgot to put the uh, Put the uh, fiberglass strip in here. I'm a little concerned about the uh, carbon fiber pressing through the base coat, even even though I've let it harden somewhat, because it's still subject subject to pressure. Like I think over time it might bleed through. But I think because this fiberglass is less harsh, less harsh of a weave, it's a gentle weave, I think it'll look like a snowshoe basically. And keep the carbon from pushing through. Just want to position it so that it's not going to show. I'm very light pressure to this because I don't want it to bleed through. Of course, we'll put it under vacuum and then I'll put more pressure on it. At least we're starting out from a good spot. Let's back down. check the alignment of the weave on here. It looks it's going to look pretty good, but I didn't really align it with the, the lines on the uh, edge. Pour some more epoxy in there. I can just reuse the same cup for tear it. And put another 127. I just like this stuff. It's just my imagination, but it smells like cat pee. I 
touching it now. So I just laid down the next layer, the 45 degree layer. Let's see. This isn't as important to get exactly right. Also, I don't want to mess up the base layer by moving this around. To some extent, we can use pressure on this layer to kind of fix any gaps in the original layer, too. It's easier to work with because it's not sticking to the base coat and I'm kind of working it from the center versus and kind of grabbing it from the sides like the last one. Alright, I do need more epoxy. of resin I'll just start there it doesn't the, the subsequent layers don't need quite as much resin as the first layer because it's already getting some wetness from the layer beneath
bit too much on the flange because they wrap around and it's, it's wasting stuff. Just want some of it on the flange. It's not over the edge of the flange. that there's an epoxy, there's a pocket of epoxy here in the corner where at least one of the layers didn't go all the way down and it's, it's fixable to an extent but not really 100% fixable. The vacuum will draw it down. That's, that's kind of why I put the base coat on so that the, any kind of pockets in the corners would not show up. where I'm going to take some of the tape off in a minute because the tape is holding this edge up this edge too basically it's basically keeping it from doing what it wants to do the fabric wants to expand on the edge I guess it's, I guess it's okay, it's, well, I don't know. Take this tape off. It's an art to take the tape off too. It's like pulling in just the right direction or the wrong direction it causes fraying. Although this is well outside the flange, so you're not gonna see it. time that takes. Oh, let's see. Let's go to this edge too. See, taking the tape off, really let it you down better. So, next layer. Actually, I want to put some more epoxy on here just for this layer. I'll probably do a double batch this time. Still got, still got three layers, five layers to soak it up. So. to remember to tear that. It's always kind of hectic because I'm thinking about the first layer of its epoxy is getting less visc or more, more viscous. Really starting to harden, so the more time I wait for 
begging. Yeah, I think what it's going to get, the heart's going to be left for the fabric. Yes, it's going to be nice. So, I have to get this done in a reasonable time frame. Five degree layer doesn't like to lay the same as the ninety degree layer either. It's even more resistant to proving. Because the uh, fabrics are not aligned with the edge, They're like opposing the edge. These first two layers are wet for sure.
I've got all the layers of carbon down, and now I'm going to do two late layers of fiberglass. This fiberglass is actually lighter than the carbon per layer. It's four ounce per square yard versus 5.7 for the uh, carbon. It'll dry to translucent, uh, not quite transparent color. Thirty-seven and thirty-seven. So I don't think this fiberglass will take that much. Be ready for the vacuum bag really soon. This layer is pretty fast. Let's do one more layer. mix any more resin for this one. So use what's already there.
this layout. 627. Let's see. Let's do the backing backing. 